All right, guys, this has got to be uh, part eight, and we're on to the exhaust of the RB26. And I can tell you, they're going to need some work. Let's have a look. All right, so here's the exhaust port. Again, we're going to start, obviously, taking the bolt lump out. But I've had a little feel, and, man, there's some ridges in this. So it's low here, low there, but high in the middle on both sides. So we're going to have to really fix that up. So there's a ridge straight through there. Uh, there's a ridge through there. So they've done that, then they've done that. But we've got this bulge here. Uh, you can't really see it. I don't know if the camera can see it or not. I'll zoom in. Or you can see a bit of a lump there. So that, that's an actual high lump. You can see right on the side of the bowl. Oh, doesn't want to focus. So we're obviously going to fix that. But again, we're just going to start with the window. And, and when you do these, um, a lot of people make the mistake of porting it like that. We don't want to. We want it to stay dead square to the window and and go in until that disappears. Now you naturally want to chase it, but don't chase it just yet. So we'll square it up and I'll show you what I mean as we go. All right, that'll do us for now. So we've just gone straight in. And now we're gonna go in and just take that higher down, but we're gonna do it from the port side so it blends properly. That way we know we haven't taken out too much. Because the RBs are thin around these areas in here. So a lot of people go wrong, they try and make that wall go straight in, but it's actually gotta go in and then turn around. So it's gotta have a curve in it. Don't take that out. Also, if you take it out and do a little bit of cross-sectional area measurements, what will happen is the port will go small, big, small, and you've killed velocity, you've killed port energy, and you're just putting more heat into the cylinder head, which is not what we want. We want to get the air out as quick as possible at the right CSA as fast as possible and retain as much heat energy in the air as possible. Wow, these trenches are everywhere. So what they've done, they've come around here and yeah, they've made a mess of this floor. So that's all we've done. We've just taken that lump out and I've just given it a quick blend. It's not too bad already. So I've only spent maybe, you know, five minutes or so just to get the port to a right, the right port shape. But you'll see what I mean, these walls go in and then radius around we want them to do that because remember the divider ends here where the turn starts so we're trying to pinch it in a little bit to keep the csa right and that's super important don't don't start laying these walls back that way and shooting in you you want it to come in roll around and then roll back into the bowl all right on to the next. This is the only time I'll recommend ridging. What I like to do is make a ridge right in the middle of that and just slowly rub it back and forth and just work it a little bit of pressure top, a little bit of pressure bottom to widen it as I get deeper and deeper. And it helps me blend into where the radius should be. Again, keeping it straight to the port. And as it gets closer to where it needs to be, I allow it to run downhill and I allow it to run uphill a little bit, just keeping the pressure on. too bad 
Again, the key here is staying on the high. It is a little tricky, but with the experience you get used to it. Because every time it drops off, it's going to gouge that floor that's meant to be there lower and lower each time. So we want to try and stay on the high. It is tricky, but again, just practice it. That's why I like to make a ridge to help me stay on it and then slowly work the shoulders of that ridge, blending it in. And remember to vary the pressure. So if I'm taking more off here and I'm coming out to the window, we actually ease up on the tool and just let the weight of the tool flutter it and clean it up. Because we don't want to take as much out of here as we do, say, when we're blending the lump. So we'll come in at this angle and as we come out, we ease the pressure, ease the pressure, ease the pressure, ease the pressure, and then just just start tidying that. And that's pretty good now. So again, it, it still needs a little bit more but I'm not gonna take it all the way. I like to leave five or 10 thousandths there until I've done the port and then I'll go around and dress the whole window. But for now, we're just taking that out of the way so we can get in there, start measuring some cross-sectional area and get it all on size. So you can see the ridge I put. We're just gonna continue that, go deeper and deeper and just slightly put a bit of pressure that way and a little bit of pressure that way. You gotta watch it doesn't skip off either side because it'll trench here and it'll trench here. So we're still keeping it parallel to the divider. Start blending the top in, and now start blending the bottom in. I'm going to let it ride that ridge. And we're nearly there. Okay, that's not too bad for the window. Now we're going to go in and start turning around this bend because there's now a, a ridge there, right there. Okay, that's not too bad for the window. Now we're gonna go in and start turning around this bend because there's now a, a ridge there, right there. And that's uh, not too bad. All right, guys, we'll call it quits there, and I'll see you in the next one for part, what is it? Nine. See ya.